God has for us today was really huge in my healing. Um, I'm not sure if all of you know my testimony, head on car accident, 29 surgeries, 30 years of pain and suffering. But during those 30 years, this was a really huge part in my healing. And it's about clearing our land. How do we clear our land? That our main scripture is Joshua 17, 15. And I would like to welcome everybody who is still coming on. And I would also like to welcome everyone who watches the Bible studies on YouTube. We want to thank you all for coming. We pray that it blesses you. And if you would like to become um, involved, just email the ministry and know that we pray for you afterwards. Amen. So I have a question for you. Have you ever seen a person give their lives to the Lord and immediately all of their problems just ended? The husband and wife just get along forever. The kids, no disobedience, great grades. Finances just flow in like torrents of rivers. And they all live life happily ever after. Think about that. Have you ever seen anybody give their life to Jesus and that happens? No. Why? Why is that? I mean, we have Jesus, we have the Holy Spirit, we have the word, we have the blood, but we live on the earth. And around us in this earth is a curse. The earth still carries the curse. Struggles, troubles, they surround us, even though we're believers. Evil and wickedness still abide in this land. Every nation, trials and tribulations remain even during Jesus's time. So the Lord wants to speak to us about this. Last week, we left off with Joshua leading the people of God into the promised land. Now today, before salvation, we were all in bondage to slavery. We became saved. Jesus set us free. And now we are on our journey with God into the promised land, right from salvation, on the earth, as he takes us into heaven. So catch the picture. In the Old Testament, we see millions of people coming out of the wilderness, and they are obeying God with Joshua. And in the New Testament, there are millions of us as believers obeying God with the Holy Spirit marching on towards the promised land. So our scripture, Joshua 17, verse 15. Then Joshua said to them, if you are such a great people, go up into the woodlands, clearing a place there for yourselves in the land of the Parisiites and the Rephaim. If the hill country of Ephraim is not wide enough for you. There's always more for us. Amen. So now, like them, we're saved. We're going into the promised land. Heaven has touched earth. But there is still work to do. So what is Jesus saying to us? If you were such a great people, are we a great people? We are a great people. If we know who we are in Christ, when we know who we are in Christ, we are continuing to clear the land, to clear and cleanse our land. Even the people around us will encounter Jesus and lives will be changed. And we will march on as the army of God with the harvest. Anybody like that idea? So. Many today are saved, but they don't see the power of God because their land has not been cleared. Anybody want to see more power of God in your life? In the Old Testament, the enemies that surrounded God's people, they did not fear the people. Most of the times they were outnumbered. They could have killed the people in a heartbeat, but they 
were afraid of their God. Now today for us, many, the enemies of God, they don't see God's presence in us. They don't see our obedience to him. And for many, there's no difference where the sinners, what the sinners are doing and the saved are doing. They're doing the same thing. So for many, there's no power, no miracles, no signs. And many today wonder, even in the church, if God has forsaken them. They see God's people sick, suffering, and demonized. Yet these are unsaved people, but they've heard about the cross of Jesus Christ. They see God's people suffer, and many are lost in the harvest. Remember, in the Old Testament time, God maintained the people's lot. As long as they obeyed him, there was no sickness, no suffering, no disease. They didn't even need new clothes. 40 years in the desert, same shoes, yeah? Now, what about us, the redeemed today? How does the world view the people of God? the army of God. When we know who we are in Christ, we can all go up into the thickest, darkest places to set other people free. So the scripture continues, clearing a place for yourselves in the land of the Parisiites and the Rephaim, if the hill country of Ephraim is not wide enough for you. Would you like all that God has for you now? Because there's always more, always more. And I'm pretty greedy. I want it all. And I know that we all do too. Amen. So let's go a little deeper with God. Many of the people of God in the Old Testament, they knew they were a great people. How do they know? They knew these people hated them, but God surrounded them. God surrounded them with clouds by day, fire by night, miracles, signs, and wonders. They couldn't even curse these people. Do you know what's like that for us today when we know who we are? Like today, many obeyed God in the Old Testament and many did not. It's the same today. And today, many are in the process of clearing their land, but some are content. We're, we're content to let the Parisiites and the Rephaim remain. Now, the old covenant was conditional. God maintained their lot and their portion through their obedience. The enemies of God in the Old Testament were seriously fierce people. They knew all about the dark arts, they had walled cities, they were wicked in their ways, all kinds of sin, all kinds of idolatry. Yet God had his group of people and he alone told them how to war, when to war, when to rest, when to remain in peace. And he provided for all their needs. And he showed himself faithful every time. Amen. So the enemies that were not cleared out of the land were very sinful people. And God knew that these people would take his people into sin, idolatry, adultery, divination, fornication, their religions, Everything that does not represent a covenant with the person of God himself. And it's really sad to say this, but many times the enemy knows God better than his people. And the enemy knows how to make us sin, how to break us from the covenants of God, from the blessings of God. Now, the Rephaim, they represent the demonic, the fallen, what people would sometimes say, you know, the big boys. They were the big idols, the religion, the principalities, the rulers, the wickedness, all of that. But God showed his people how to take them out. 
because they had to go. And it's the same for us today. Most people today don't even want to consider dealing with the demonic. That's because like, in my opinion, they don't understand or they probably have a spirit of fear. Most of us today, if we could look at the Parisiites, we would think they're not a big deal. These were rural people. They lived in an unwalled city. They were spread out. They grew all their own stuff. They were pretty self-sufficient. They weren't large in numbers, but they were idol worshipers. But to the people of God, they didn't seem like they were a threat. So they let them live. We have the same enemies today around us, but God still wants us to obey him. Why? Because he knows. He knows. In the Old Testament, these people were to be put to death. But in the New Covenant, we have authority over them. So the word land is another name for covenant. And we have a covenant with God. Does God take his covenant seriously? We've all read the Bible. Does God take his covenant seriously? Did Jesus take his covenant with the Father seriously when he went to the cross to save us? Thank God he did. The question is for us today, are we taking our covenant with God seriously? Not word, not deed, not action seriously, like our lives are depending upon it. Amen? Because it is. God knows our enemies have the ability to turn us ever so slightly without a threat, without a threat to get us into the world's way of operating. We've all seen it happen. So we have to understand our land. We, each of us, is the city of God. We're all part of the kingdom of God. We can read about the city of God, the city of Jerusalem, the temple of God in the Bible. This is who we are as individuals, as family members, and together as a body. There are many gates. There are many walls. There are many ramparts. There's many openings. There's many secret places that need to be understood and be defended and cleared out. Many believers today are beguiled. They are in error. They are deceived. They believe that the moment they said the prayer of salvation, that they don't have to do another thing. Everything is optional. Jesus became a curse on the tree, yet they disregard the curses in our sinful world that we live in. They can live in sin and never have to repent again. Repentance is not something big. It's optional because they said that they were sorry at salvation. They don't read the Bible. They are believers who have no fear of God. They ignore the person of God in their daily lives, but they will go through the ritual of believing God with no love. Basically, they can do whatever they want because they said the prayer of salvation. But if this is the case, then why at the prayer of salvation are their lives not absolutely changed? Never another problem. Perfect family, perfect job never a day of trouble, because they gave their lives to the Lord. The prayer of salvation is a covenant to obey the word of God, to obey God himself and abide daily with him with no separation. He is the head. We are the body. If our head was sitting over there, would we work? We would not. Salvation is deliverance from sin and its consequences by abiding in relationship with God through faith in Jesus Christ. Now, if Jesus 
who is God, had to obey the word, and he is the word. How can we think that we do not have to? So why is this scripture key to us as believers? Who are the Parisiites? The Parisiites ended up becoming slaves to God's people, Israel. This would make them think these people are absolutely not a threat. They're our slaves. They even have to listen to us. But in the book of Ezra, we read that the people of God ended up practicing their, quote, disgusting ways, unquote, and mixed their holy race with them. The word Parisiites means unprotected. We are being warned not to let our spirits be unprotected. Parisiite spirits, they seek a place where you have an opening that is not guarded and they want to sit there. And they cause a lot of damage because we don't suspect them. But Joshua and Jesus are warning us, don't drop your guard and clear them out. Proverbs 25, 28 teaches us, he that has no rule over his own spirit is like a city that is broken down and without walls. Now remember, the Parisiites did not live in walled cities. So what are our walls? We have spiritual walls. Our face is a wall against the enemy. We have to guard our face. But our face also reflects Jesus into our world. Our emotions are a wall. Does the enemy mess with anybody's emotions? Absolutely. Absolutely. Keeping a right attitude in our spirit is a wall. The way we think is a wall because we have to control what's going on in our thoughts. When we pray, when we worship God, these are walls. These are walls, especially you've all heard praise is a weapon. Prayer is a weapon. The enemy cannot penetrate these walls when in the spirit we are praying and praising God. Thank you, Jesus. The Bible is a wall. Yeah. God is also called a shield. A shield is another name for a wall. When we find ourselves getting angry out of the clear blue sky, or gossip is just finding its way in our lives, or we feel lust is coming at us for no reason at all, or wrong attitudes, or we, we just feel like we're losing control with our relationship with God and we don't understand why, we need to build our walls higher because we cannot let these spirits in. They look for an opening. The Parisiites also want us to let our guards down because they want us to think that they're not a threat. They want to take our courage. And in the spirit realm, they want to separate us. They want to isolate us from what is right and what is good. These are deceptive spirits. They operate in lies and their goal is to put us in error. We have to put them far from us. We're always going to have enemies around us. But what also needs to be cleared is what's inside of us. What is within us? The word Joshua means Jehovah saves. God saves us. Jesus is our salvation. Jesus saves us every single day, whether we realize it or not. If you could see the things around us, we would absolutely be, be obedient to God. And he, he wants us to learn. He wants us to learn. And we want to learn because we want to go deeper with him. So who are the Rephaim? Their name means terrible ones. The Rephaim was a race of giants. You can read about them in the Old Testament, starting in Genesis, actually, and it goes on. This race 
had loads of land. They had valleys, they had prime farmland, land that was desired by many nations. We know that the Rephaim's lines did not end up falling in pleasant places because of their disobedience to God. And we can also read about all the suffering and the deaths of God's people because this race had many things that other people wanted. And so many tribes and nations followed them, but they suffered and they died because they followed the portion of unbelievers. We don't want to follow anyone except the good shepherd. Isaiah talks about them, 26, 14. They are dead. They shall not live. They are deceased. They shall not rise. Therefore, thou hast visited and destroyed them and made all their memory to perish. We know that there's an enemy. We believe in Jesus. We believe in Jesus. We have to believe in the demonic because Jesus taught us about it. So these were physical giants in the land and they're also our spiritual giants. They represent everything around us that is against God and they shall never be returned to their former state of glory. And they like to take people down with them. But that is not our lot in life. And we thank Jesus for the blood. A giant, no matter how big or how scary, is no match for our risen Lord Jesus. Amen. Yet we must clear these giants out. We have to drive them from our land because we are now the land of God. We're bought and we're paid for. Our lines fall in pleasant places, but within each of us, there is land that needs to be cleared and cleansed. So Joshua represents the physical kingdom, but Jesus represents the spiritual kingdom and both have boundaries and God wants us protected. So what do we have to clear our land from? How are we becoming this one kingdom on earth right now? No separation. Jesus closed the gap between heaven and earth. What do we need to clear our land from? Our land has to be conquered from ourselves. Everything about us that does not line up with God's word, his humility, his covenant has to be conquered. The land had to be cleared of the guilty. We have to repent. We have to realize that we're not getting away with sin. We don't want to get away with sin. We learned what happens with sin. We want to repent. We have to clear a holy place within ourselves for the Holy Spirit, a place that is holy for God. And the land had to be divided. We have to be set apart unto God. We have to clear out the evil. We have to ask the Holy Spirit to come and clear away the darkness, to take all our trash out. Everything that we believed, all our tradition, all the stuff that we inherited that doesn't line up with God's word and our covenant, we want it out including our own way of having control because we gave our lives to Jesus. We have to take the acts of the word. We have to have with God, clear out all the thickets, all the underbrush, all the thorn bushes, even the tallest, most majestic has to fall because there's only one God and we are not it. God is, we want to worship only him. This is our covenant. We have to clear away all the high places, the idols, anything that we care about more than our relationship with God. And we could say, yep, that's what I'm doing. But if we think that the enemy is not bringing new stuff our way every day, these are the Parisiites. They're so cunning, so cunning. So every day, every day, We are depending on God, just like the people of Israel, being obedient to God. 
He's not talking about, oh, you're in trouble if you miss church. It's about being faithful to him. That's our obedience to God, to be faithful to him. He remains faithful to us every day. We say that God is a good father, but honestly, what good is it if we don't listen to him? If we don't take him seriously, what good is having a good father? So it says in Ezekiel 20, 38, clearing out from among you all those who are uncontrolled and who are sitting against me, I will take them out of the land where they are living, but they will not come into the land of Israel and you will be certain that I am the Lord. So all of this, God is telling us, look, it's just like in the days of old. I'm with you. I am your God. Depend on me. Obey me. Get in my word. Let my Holy Spirit teach you. So God will remove all that controls his people now especially our own disobedience. Will we let it go? The inhabitants of the land, they have to be driven out. We don't politely ask them to go. We command them out in Jesus' wonderful name. Amen? So in 2 Corinthians 7.1, it says, to clear the land and obtain the promises of God. Let us cleanse ourselves from all filthiness of the flesh and spirit, perfecting holiness in the fear of God. This is not just our physical temples. It's also our homes, our properties, our families, our televisions, what we're watching, our ministries, our careers, our dreams our giftings, even where we live, every nation. So what is filthiness? In the Greek, it's an unholy alliance with idols, keeping associations with wrong peoples, secret sin, believing and worshiping that which is not God. Whether we understand we are doing this or we don't, the scripture states, my people perish from a lack of knowledge. So picture in the Old Testament, all these enemies around dear Israel, and there's God right there with them. What if the people just did not obey God anyway? And just if God said, go war, they said, nah, we're just going to sit here and let the enemies overtake us. What, what then? Would God have protected his people? Absolutely. Just as he protected us before we were even saved, God protected us. But look at the consequences to our children, our families, and the generations after us from disobedience. Let's obey God seriously. Let's clear the land. Let's let his power overtake the darkness. This is transformation for us. We go, he fills. We received fullness at salvation, but we're still in the way. We got to clear and cleanse the land. We want God, we ask God to let his light shine within us, not just as a candle, but as a beacon for other people to see, for everyone around us to see. That's God's desire. We want all the earth to know the king and the kingdom of heaven is present. He's protecting us. His humble servants, humble servants of the most high. Not bossy, not crass, not evil, not hypocrites, not one person during the day and another at night. The humble servants of the Lord God protecting us. The world needs to see this so much right now. Even surrounded in a sin-filled world, clearing and cleansing our land can only bring us peace where we can testify as Paul did. 
Look at all the stuff Paul went through. Shipwreck, train, stoned. Oh, so much. What does Paul say? Wherefore, sirs, be of good cheer, because I believe God that it shall be, even as he told me. Paul had complete faith in what God told him. Let's get serious and believe what God has told us. Sickness has to go. Demons cannot stand. Our wrong attitudes, God knows. He's here for us. What about addictions? We can try, we can try, and we can try. But it's only God, but he's here with us. And as Paul said, be of good cheer, because I believe what God told me. Amen? Family members sick, I believe what God told me. Problems at work, we pray. We believe what God has told us. Was Paul saved? Yeah. And he remained repenting, praying, and obeying God, just like we have to. Paul depended on God for every battle he faced. I don't even know how many times he was flogged, beaten with rods, put in prison, stoned. It didn't matter. Even when they thought he was dead, he got up, went to the next village and preached. Can you imagine what he looked like? Must have been totally black and blue. Yeah. I bet you he preached with fire because he believed what God had told him. He preached Jesus. He preached the cross. He preached the resurrection. He preached repentance. He fiercely defended the authority of the believer that we each have. Will we each fiercely defend our authority and find out who we are in Christ to go deeper daily to find out who? Because God always has more for us. Yet he remained as a servant in chains. So to conclude, a saved, healed, and redeemed person absolutely knows every day you have to depend on the Holy Spirit for all things. We don't take for granted that everything is just fine and well. We know. We've read. We have God. We know that enemies surround us. There's many that we see, but many that we don't see. There's many angels protecting us that we don't see also. But the point is, is that we have a father who is good and we want to listen to him because he sees all. Faith is a substance. We speak, we believe. Sin is also a substance that has dire consequences. It lives. Sin lives. It's alive. We don't want that in our lives. We don't want its roots. We don't want the old. We don't want it going into the generations after us. So let's clear out our sin. One of the things that I really love about reading the Bible is when I see sin in the Bible, it's like, oh man, God, I want to repent because it's things that we don't realize is affecting us, but the Holy Spirit brings it to light. And it could be something in our future but we trust God. We just want to remain pure and holy. And we can't do that on our own. We need the Holy Spirit to do it. So let our faith be our light, not only to ourselves and to our own, but to the lost. There's so many people looking for a real experience with God. And the Lord said, the laborers are few. If you, if you look online, like online healing, you will see pages of new age and witchcraft. And, and you know, we, we pray, let's do this. Let's do this with the Lord. Amen. So let's let our obedience to God make our enemies fear and tremble because that's who we are. Let God arise and let our enemies be scattered. 
Then God will expand our territory and his power will be seen wider. Take more land as we walk in the abundance with God and he will show himself faithful through the process, just like he did in the Old Testament, just like he does in our lives. First John 2, 8 says this, on the other hand, I am writing a new commandment to you, which is true and realized in Christ and in you. That's pretty big because the darkness of moral blindness is clearing away and the true light, the revelation of God in Christ is already shining. So let it be so that people see the truth, the same truth that is in Christ, in us. Because underneath all this stuff, his light is there. He's already shining. We don't have to question God about God anymore because his perfect light is shining in our hearts. He made us aware of his perfect love. The light of Jesus brightens our pathways that we are to walk. It's not dark. It's not fearful anymore when we know who we are in Christ and remove everything that has shadows within us. But his love does not allow us to hate. It does not allow us to control. And it does not lack his love. So if any of that is happening, we need to get right with God. The light of God helps us to see more clearly what needs to be cleared out. We have two sets of eyes. We have spiritual eyes that the Holy Spirit will show what needs to be cleared out as well. Why? So we do not stumble. So we don't have other people stumbling with us. Remember, we're the army of God marching forward. One head, one body, not a head over there, not an arm over there, not stumbling, not crippled, not lame. We're not children of the world. We don't want the blinding effects of Satan, how he is deceiving even the beloved. In the end, even the elect will be deceived. How serious are we taking our covenant with God? How deep are we willing to go to protect? We know we're safe, but what about our families? What about those around us? Amen? We're not full grown yet. We're still little children. God is our father. He has forgiven us. He has paid our debt. We still have work to do. And as we overcome by clearing out the land, the enemy, we take him out as we're maturing in the word of God. So Father, we thank you for your word. We thank you for anyone who will watch this teaching after that wants a closer walk with God, that they know salvation is available. We are here with God. He's real. He is real in each of our lives. And if you want to know Jesus, just email the ministry. Lord, we give you all the glory. We thank you for all that you have done, for all that you do day and night. You know, when people, when I pray with people, sometimes I'll say, I find such comfort in knowing that Jesus prays for us day and night. Why do you think Jesus has to intercede for us? Do you think that he knows something that maybe we don't? And he's praying for our offspring. He's praying for the generations to come. He's praying. He's with us. Thank you, Lord, for all that you've done. And we thank God that as Jesus is preparing our mansions in heaven, that the Holy Spirit is here with us, in us, on the earth. And we're clearing the land and we're making our temple prepared for the coming of Christ, our betrothed. Amen. Yes, we'll be perfected in the twinkling of an eye. But there's a harvest here. Let's get perfected a little bit more every day so that Jesus will be seen in all those around us.
JesusTodayMinistries.org. We are here to minister and to pray with you, right in the comfort of your own home or your office. If you are seeking counseling, healing, deliverance, financial breakthrough, if you feel that there is a block or you're experiencing hindrance in your blessings, please know that God cares about you and all that concerns you. Hi, my name is Peggy Golden. I am a pastor and I have a master's in Christian counseling. God has made a way for people all over the world to receive counsel, healing, and deliverance through the use of technology right in your own homes. God heals, saves, and delivers his people every hour of the day. There is no distance for God. If you do not know God, if you are seeking him, or if you have found yourself in a situation that you need help getting out of, please know nothing is too hard for God. Please visit my website at jesustodayministries.org. You can get to know more about me there. And please remember to read the testimonials of what others have experienced by contacting this ministry. There is no fee, but you are able to make a donation. For those who are in the States as well as international clients, we can use voice or video chat on Skype, WhatsApp, Facebook Messenger, or Viber. I look forward to praying with you and all that God will do.